we came together uh, three years ago, uh, you know, looking at the the need, it's the various needs of the energy transition, uh, looking at the needs of infrastructure, looking at the needs of of, of uh, capital uh, that is required in order to to drive this transition. Welcome to Better Businesses, Better Results, a podcast series focused on exploring how to build better businesses by starting with a specific why in mind. Hear and watch Carlisle Portfolio Company CEOs, executives, and management teams discuss the results they are aiming for and the value creation plans they are executing on. Welcome back to Better Businesses, Better Results. I'm Meg Starr, the Global Head of Impact at Carlisle, and I'm delighted to be joined by Juan Macias, the CEO of Alpha Structure, a leading energy as a service provider. We're going to discuss how the company is helping to drive the energy transition, and in particular, ways it's developed customized, integrated energy and financial solutions that can help organizations reduce complex emissions. We're going to discuss how Alpha Structure enabled Montgomery County, Maryland's transit fleet to transition from diesel to electric and their goal to reach net zero by 2035. Welcome Juan, thank you so much for joining us. Hello Meg, Uh, thank you for having me. I look forward to our conversation and to sharing this story. So Juan, to kick it off, can you tell us a little bit more about Alpha Structure, what it is, how it came to be and and what Alpha Structure is trying to solve? Sure, sure, it's my pleasure to to share that. Look, it's it's, uh, it's an exciting story, right? Both uh, Schneider Electric and and Carlisle are are purpose-driven firms. Uh, And uh, we came together uh, three years ago, uh, you know, looking at the the need, it's the various needs of the energy transition, uh, looking at the needs of infrastructure, looking at the needs of of, of, uh, capital uh, that is required in order to to drive this transition. So uh, the idea was bringing together the capabilities that Schneider Electric had uh, in the area of microgrids, control automation, the energy transition, coupling that together with Carlisle's capabilities around structuring, financing, uh, and both of the firms bring in uh, their collective portfolio of customers and touch points in in the market. So the vision was to create a purpose-built platform, uh, Alpha Structure, to bring to the market uh, a firm that could uh, design, build, own, operate, and maintain behind the meter energy assets. Uh, so the, the focus of, of, uh, of Alpha Structure is to work both with public and private customers who are energy sensitive, energy intensive, and who have uh, commitments uh, to meet uh, greenhouse gas reduction objectives, resilience objectives, uh, energy availability objectives. That's really helpful background one. So transitioning to focus on the Montgomery County, Maryland project, can you tell us a little bit about that? What was the municipality trying to solve for, both on the emissions reduction side and the fleet side? And how was this project designed to really achieve those goals? Look, uh, this really begins uh, with Montgomery County, who is uh, really a national leader in, in responding to, to climate change. Uh, you know, the county uh, is is committed to, to this transition. And, and it really all begins uh, for the county uh, back in the in the 2012 uh, time frame, uh, that year there was a, a major derecho storm uh, that went through the county, and that had a pretty significant impact on about 250,000 of its residents, 71 uh, of the of the facilities uh, that the county has, and that resulted in you know a multi-day power outage. And that was one of the one of uh, the events that that uh, that triggered them to really think about resilience uh, and and sustainability. So that coupled with their overall vision uh, really was an anchoring point for them to to establish some pretty ambitious targets, which uh, which as a, as a county uh, is to be a hundred percent reduction of greenhouse gas emissions by twenty thirty five. And, uh, and one of uh, the action items in particular was to transition their transit fleet from diesel vehicles to, to zero emission vehicles 
100% by 2035. So to give you a bit of context, uh, the county has uh, today 377 transit buses uh, in their ride-on system, uh, and they're focused on, of course, delivering you know, prompt, uh, reliable service to, to their ridership. Uh, and they also see that fleet growing to, to over 470 buses by the end of 2026. So, you know, this is a, a quite important service for, for the county. That's a really interesting one. So I think we've been seeing that a lot right now in the face of the current energy crisis and the situation in Ukraine. We've had some people ask us if that means that we see the energy transition slowing down. And actually what we've seen is that it has really underlined the need for resiliency and frankly, energy security particularly in the format of having more distributed renewable. And, and so it's interesting that we're seeing that both at the local level in instances like Montgomery County, but also more broadly at the federal level. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I think the, the situation at hand uh, is really driving an acceleration. You know, maybe I'll share a little bit about about the project, right? So, so one of, uh, as I mentioned, one of the targets was uh, the transit system. Uh, so the county operates uh, three depots today, and they selected one of their depots, the, the Brookville site, uh, to be the site of their first smart uh, smart energy bus depot. And that site uh, serves 149 buses. So uh, we identified uh, 70 buses for the first transition. Uh, and so there we have designed an integrated energy system, which is 6.2 megawatts. And that system uh, is designed to deliver 4.1 megawatts of charging capacity uh, for those 70 buses. So, uh, and that is uh, an, an integrated system comprised of solar storage, uh, some uh, natural gas generation, which will transition to renewable natural gas uh, over time. Uh, all of the charging infrastructure, charge management software, and all of the digitization. So uh, the system that we're designed and we're delivering to the county is an integrated solution, turnkey solution, uh, to address uh, that those charging needs and infrastructure needs. Pooja Goyle, who runs Carlisle's Renewable and Sustainable Energy uh, platform, has said recently that she really sees that the phase 1B of the energy transition is really all about these hybrid solutions. How do you integrate solar plus storage plus really understanding how the grid functions together to really build out the resiliency? So it makes a lot of sense in the context of municipal bus fleets. And on that topic, one, we, we've been seeing a lot of interest for municipalities to switch over their bus fleets. Yes. Top of the environmental benefits, there's long-term cost benefits. There's also significant public health benefits when you don't have diesel engines idling and really generating a lot of particulate matter, which has really significant impacts, particularly on childhood health. Yeah. So there, there's clearly a big interest and a big will to do this, but I'm curious about what some of the specific challenges are that you're seeing for electric fleet owners when it comes to actually charging those electric fleets. Uh, look, I think, uh, you know, some of the, the, the challenges, uh, I would say, begin in a uh, in an in integrated thinking, right? So as uh, as we have dialogue with both public and private fleets, I might add you, right? Uh, so medium and heavy duty vehicles, both public and private, uh, there's a lot of focus initially uh, on the vehicle themselves, right? And which vehicle, what characteristics of the vehicle, uh, and then we get uh, we go to pilots, and and there's a discussion uh, and 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 uh, working on the charging infrastructure, uh, the energy requirements, and then when you start moving to scaling, right, you start really seeing the magnitude of uh, the energy requirements and the load changes, and uh, and that really drives an understanding of the need of the infrastructure. Are, uh, where is the energy going to come from? Is the energy green energy? Is the energy supply resilient? Uh, what is the, the capital that's required, not only for the buses, but also for all of the charging and energy infrastructure that needs to, put it, that needs to be put in place to move from pilot to, to, to scale, right? I want to spend a moment on that. 
point around integration and in particular the organization you lead alpha structure a key part of what you do is integrating energy solutions and financial solutions because Correct. those really have to go hand in hand yeah. can you tell us a little bit about how that fits with instances like montgomery county but then also more broadly for the energy transition Look, when, uh, when we created Alpha Structure, we came together between Schneider Electric and all of their uh, decades of experience around microgrids, microgrid technology, and having designed and built over 300 microgrids around the world. And we coupled that in a very integrated way with Carlisle's capabilities around structuring and financing. So we've taken both of those uh, capabilities and built on top of it a platform where we have the ability to design uh, and, and work with our customers in the solutioning, understanding their specific uh, needs and objectives around sustainability, around resilience, around structuring. Uh, and we're able to, to design a, an integrated solution uh, we're able to underwrite and structure and contract uh, the, and meet those objectives for the client. And uh, we have an execution capability as well as operating and maintaining these assets over their entire life cycle. And the, the challenge you faced with Montgomery was uh, no mean feat. Um, in addition to you know, reaching their net zero emissions by 2035 goal, they also clearly needed uninterrupted transit bus service under any power circumstance. And so you, you've touched on this a little bit, but can you take us down to the ground level and, and walk us through what was built, how you figured out what to build, and really what that solution looks like on the ground for the people that live in Montgomery County? An electric fleet by design is an integrated system. So, uh, and behind that, or in front of that system, uh, really is uh, various departments within a particular jurisdiction. It could be the transportation department, could be the general services department, the finance department. So in our process, we really begin by understanding who are all the different stakeholders at, at the customer? What are the objectives and the business and the commitments that uh, the county has made, uh, the performance and, and service objectives that they have towards, towards the, the end users? So we begin by understanding all of that uh, and then designing a system and a series of options that where we have a techno-economic and contractual optimization, structuring optimization, and we lay those in front of the customers and we work through that with the customer in order to really identify, for example, resilience. How much resilience do, do you want and at, and at what cost, right? Do we want to be able to, in total loss of utility power, to be able to, to charge the buses for three days, five days, or seven days? So we were able to walk through all of those trade-offs with, with the customer uh, in order to come up with a final design. And also an implementation structure, uh, because this, uh, this particular bus depot, the Brookville bus depot, it has never stopped operations. We have a very complex construction schedule in order to be able to have ongoing operations. Those 70 buses, will deliver 75,000 metric tons of greenhouse gas reductions uh, every 12 years or 10,000 miles driven, right? So pretty significant uh, reduction in, in, in greenhouse gases uh, that, uh, that we'll deliver to, to the county and, and to our overall environment. Sounds like it's gonna be a busy summer for you all. It is, it is, very exciting. And one other thing that comes up a lot is what, what does this actually cost? And, and what is the financial impact for municipalities? A lot of municipalities are focused on reducing their carbon emissions, on thinking about things like resiliency. But a lot of times there's a conception that that comes at enormous upfront cost. And so I'm curious what that actually looks like from the perspective of the municipality and how that compares to their costs before undergoing this project. One, the energy as a service model is a, a long-term power purchase agreement, energy services agreement. So, you know, it could be 20, 25 years, 30 years in, in length. Uh, it is zero capex cost upfront to, to the client. So 
Uh, there's no upfront capital required by them. Uh, we charge the client a combination of either volumetric charge, kilowatt hour charge for use of energy, uh, along with a resilience charge, a monthly resilience charge. So all that structuring is tailored to the specific needs of, of the client. And uh, so this really is a, um, a vehicle that allows a client not only to implement a pilot, but most importantly, to accelerate and scale. And so as a, a wrap up, I'd love to hear from you. What advice would you have for other similar organizations or entities that are looking to do this? And how would you give the advice to an organization to get started here? Look, I think one of the uh, key areas of advice that I would that I would uh, that I would give both public and private fleet owners one is uh, is systems thinking and holistic thinking, because we're we're not just uh, converting a diesel vehicle to an electric vehicle, zero emission vehicle. We're converting how we run a diesel fleet to running a zero emission fleet. And this is really a material change. So that change really requires a systems thinking and a holistic solution. Uh, I would really strongly advise uh, those fleet owners to think, how are they gonna scale? What are the capabilities and capacities that are gonna be required in their organization and their chosen partners in order to make this transition uh, efficiently. In addition, I would also recommend looking at our historical um, models, our business models. You know, in Alpha Structure, we bring uh, an innovation in, in, uh, in an as a service model for infrastructure. So I would also recommend uh, the fleet owners to, to uh, look at new business models in order to achieve uh, their objectives in this transition. Uh, I believe that uh, there is a, an important place to, to play for, for private capital and, uh, and firms that have the capacity and the capability to bring those as a service solutions to accelerate this transition. Thank you so much, Juan, for joining me on this episode of Better Businesses, Better Results. Alpha Structure's partner with Montgomery County is clearly a leading example of what's next in climate resilience. It sounds like you have a busy few weeks ahead of you, <laughs> yes. so we will let you go. But we really appreciate you joining and sharing this case study of what this looks like in action. Thank you, Meg. Appreciate you having me.